Hello? What do you think you're doing, Kate? I wanted updates. I wanted results. Certainly, Mr. Marson. We all do. Down on the ground, we're doing all we can, but there's no new developments. Kate, I don't think you understand the urgency of this situation. Universal toys are on my back and digging in. I can't hold them off much longer. You're putting the firm in a very tricky situation. I am very sorry, but a slight mishap or two has meant that I've had to modify my mission temporarily. Miss Walker, you're walking on a minefield here. I don't have to underline that this affair is Class A Priority Numero Uno. Hot! I am only too aware of that, Mr. Marson, and believe me, I am doing all I possibly can. But this mission is really no piece of cake. You can have all the cake you want and eat it, too, when you get home. Next time I call you, I want something concrete, something solid. I want results. You want to stand? Results! Yes, Mr. Marson. Good morning, sir. Good day to you, ma'am. And welcome to the Hotel Kronsky. I don't expect you've made a reservation, have you? Well, no matter. We've got a few rooms left with the sea view. By far the best on offer. Uh, well, actually I wasn't counting on staying in Arrowbad. I see. It's like that then. Uh, so, what can I do for you? Let me introduce myself. I'm Kate Walker. I'm a lawyer sent by a major American law firm to take care of a delicate inheritance case. Ah, very pleased to meet you, Miss Walker. Felix Matana at your service. I'm the receptionist of this establishment. Between you and me and the brick wall, I often play the role of general manager here, too. Ah, these days the place ain't what it used to be. This hotel is truly incredible, though. It's kind of sumptuous in an old-fashioned way. You should see how sumptuous our suites are. For more than a whole century, they have accommodated some of the world's greats. Would you like to take one? No, it's okay, thank you. I'm not staying. I've got to get away. I'm expected. Right. Well, in that case, I don't see what I can do for you. It's a real shame that there aren't any guests at your hotel. We had our moment of glory, but now it's all in the past. That's all. Doesn't it make you sad? Why should it? Once upon a time, I met the greatest of the great. Now I got my memories. Sweet memories. Usually I travel on this fantastic mechanical train. Haven't I seen some kind of a station here? Is it possible to arrive here by train then? Of course it is. What were you suggesting? Uh, if I'm not very much mistaken, that's your air balloon I see getting blown to shreds in the hotel garden. Oh yeah, the airship. That's a bit different. I just borrowed that to make the round-trip journey to Arrowbad. Whatever. You better think about getting it off there, and quick. With that contraption on my lawn, some of my clientele might have a relapse. Could you tell me if a certain Hans Vorlberg has ever been here? On a spa holiday? Uh, yes. Yes, that's it. I'm sorry, but our hotel register is strictly confidential. Come on, please. It's not like it's a state secret you're telling me here. And if I just let you consult our register, uh, what am I going to get out of it? Uh, my eternal gratitude? That's just what I was expecting. Adieu, as the French say, madame. Sir, I really could use your help. I'm sorry, ma'am, but my helping hand only serves my hotel guests. Well, let me just say that by helping me out, you'd also be helping out one of your very own guests. Ma'am, I'm not to be wound around anyone's little finger, you hear? I want to meet someone who lives here. That's very inconvenient. None of my customers said they were expecting someone. You can't just turn up like that. We've got a very strict policy. In this day and age, the hotel ain't too open to, um, impromptu visits from any Tom, Dick, or Harry. Uh, please, I absolutely must speak with her. It's very important. If it was that important, all you had to do was ring the hotel. Her people come here to rest, you see, to get away from the world, which ain't turning so good these days. Uh, don't let me keep you. Good day to you, ma'am. Honestly, if I could have called, I would have called, but I couldn't. So, please, can you bend the rules just a little, sir? 
Ma'am, in this hotel, we don't bend nothing for no one. With respect. Well, thanks anyway. At your service, ma'am. Sir? You again? You're beginning to really overstep the mark. I warn you, one more and I'm going to... But what the hell's going on over there? Why is it me gets hell to pay when there's already too much work to do? doesn't work. Just as I thought. Hello there. Good afternoon, miss. Are you the hotel barman? My name is James, miss. James, the automaton nurse. I am not a barman. I'm sorry. I didn't want to upset you. If you don't mind, miss, I would appreciate it if you would just be a little more rigorous in the terms you employ in the future. My name is Kate Walker. Pleased to meet you, miss. You are not here for treatment, are you? No, I'm not. I only want to meet Madame Romansky. I would be delighted to serve you tea when Madame returns from her constitutional. I don't want to impose. Maybe your mistress won't want to take tea with me. Madame likes to complain for the sake of it. Believe me, she loves visits. In that case, thanks for the invitation. Have you ever heard of a Mr. Varlberg? The name is not entirely foreign to me. Really? You know Hans Varlberg? That I cannot say, miss. Madam has forbidden me from talking about him and even mentioning his name. Why? Nostalgia, sadness, medication. Call it what you humans will. We never had this conversation, did we, miss? Madam would be very angry to learn that I know, 
And now you know as well. Don't worry. Mum's the word. I'm looking for Madame Romansky. Do you know where she is? 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. Madame Romansky takes her daily constitutional on the pier. Tea is served at 5 o'clock sharp. Is it possible to go see her? As you wish, but do pay attention to the salt wind. Can you take me to Helena Romansky? Not at this hour, miss. Madame will still be watching the sea at the end of the pier. So? Madame knows perfectly well that during this season I don't go down to the pier. My wheelwork goes dicky under the double corrosive action of the salt and sand winds. Listen, you can hear them sweeping up and down the beach and out to sea. We call it the salt wind here. It'll drive us all crazy one of these days. Come on, just make a little effort. No, I'll stay here and make ready for Madame in case she needs me. She can be so unpredictable, such violent swings of mood. Well, I'm going, James. See you later, maybe. It would be a pleasure to see you again, miss. Madame Romansky? Madame Helena Romansky? Who are you? What do you want? I'm sorry to disturb you, ma'am. My name's Kate Walker. I've come on behalf of Frank Malkovich. Ah, oh, Malkovich, the old son of a gun. Are you one of his relatives? <laughs> Not exactly. He's a good friend of my mother's. He told me you might be here in Arrowbad. I'm American, a lawyer. To what do I owe your visit? You have come so far. It must be important. Indeed it is. I have very delicate and pressing business to attend to. I have just left... Later, my dear, later. I have a slight headache. This hotel mask, they pinch so. I have to go in. Please, could you be so kind as to call my valet? Your valet? Of course. You back here again? How dare you show your damn face round here? Get out of here immediately! Please, I absolutely must find... Miss Romansky! Oh, yes, I'm sorry. She managed to lie her way in here. Don't matter how vigilant you are, there's always one. Uh, but it won't happen again. She'll be out on her ear before you can say, uh... I hope she hasn't upset you too much. Oh, Felix. Stop being such a grizzly bear. This woman is my guest. She's your guest? But that ain't possible. This scandal didn't even know you three hours ago. Be quiet, Felix, before you offend someone. Miss Romansky, please. This maniac turned up earlier and tried to wreck the fountain. If it wasn't for the... I said enough, Felix. Please treat Miss Walker with the respect befitting one of my friends. Don't touch and don't swear. Have I made myself clear, Mr. Smetana? Yes, yes, crystal clear, Madame Romansky. Please do accept my humble apologies. Very good, Felix. You may go now.
No point weighing myself down. James, what are you waiting for? Don't tell me you didn't hear the bell this time. The bell did indeed ring, but it is very windy outside, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is a bit gusty. But what's that got to do with it? Madam doesn't understand. She says an automaton doesn't need protection, but my insides don't like the salty wind. I'm afraid to go out, you know. And if you wore my mask to protect you against the salt, would that help? Oh, most certainly. Katie Poo. So, have you met her yet? This Helena person. What would she like? Does she remember Frank? Hi, Mom. Yeah, sure. I met her and, yeah, she's living in Arobad. You can thank Frank for me again. I'll remember too, honey. So, what's Arobad like? Maybe Frank can take me there one day. It's this seaside resort, Ma, but it isn't what it used to be. You'd be real disappointed. Maybe you're right. So, when are you coming home? Is that mission all over then? Not really, Ma. I still haven't found the heir I'm looking for to wrap up the case. Helena Romansky's a kind of detour here. Listen, Munchkin, I get the distinct impression that you're being led up the garden path. Why don't you just come home, tell your boss this air just doesn't exist, that you've done all you can, et voila. Do you want me to call him for you? Ma, please, don't get involved. Looking for Hans Varlberg is what I'm being paid for, but I also just want to find him for myself. Honestly, you're just as stubborn as your father. Don't complain that your mother didn't warn you. Don't worry, I won't. It's a real honor to meet you, Madame Romansky. People have told me so much about you. Mm. People still talk about me. Oh, dear. Of course. Everyone tells me how wonderful you were. How you were one of the greatest singers of the century. Ah, so I was, my dear. But surely you didn't come here just to dig up the past. Like I said, I'm a lawyer, and to tell you the truth, I don't know much about classical music. But after talking to Mr. Borodin and Mr. Malkovich, they really made me want to hear you. Oh, you are too late, my child. Ten years too late. And how is dear Frank? Do tell me. Oh, I am still angry with him for leaving like that to America. Don't be offended, but I never suspected those cowboys actually have an ear for real music. I don't think he sings much anymore. The odd gala, the odd charity event. Anyway, he sends his love. Oh, his love. <laughs> Do you hear that, James? There is someone who still loves me on the other side of the Atlantic. I never said they didn't, madam. What about this other gentleman? What is his name? Borodin? Do I know him? Yes. You once sang in Komkalsgrad. An incredible recital, if the director's account is anything to go by. If you only knew how moved he still is. He's another one who still adores you. I must confess that seeing one of my greatest admirers once more would do wonders for me, but... Ah, oh, my voice. It is so... Ah, I couldn't. You must have had a fantastic life. So exhilarating. Ah, much more than you could ever imagine. I used to sing the finest melodies of the moment in the most fantastic theaters around the world. I have been hailed by kings and courted by princes. Grown men would sink to their knees when they heard the first notes of my recital. My voice could break crystal glass and hearts, many hearts. I'm not surprised. 
then one day's sickness steals away the gift life has given you. My voice started to betray me. I started to get migraines. My health failed. They sent me here to let this spa town weave its healing spell. I was only going to rest for a month, but then the month became a year and the years get longer. But you look so healthy to me. Oh, thank you, my dear. Strange. I get the impression that Hans Vorlberg turned up here, too. You know Hans Vorlberg? Not exactly. I'm looking for him to sort out this inheritance case. But I've had to snoop around in his past a bit to get on his trail, and I guess he's kind of a close friend now. You knew him, didn't you? Oh, yes. I knew Hans Wollerberg. Do you hear, James? Ah, oh, if you had had the chance to meet Hans. My Hans. Oh, my God. What has become of him? Where is he? As questions go, madam, that one is not without certain complications. I'm sorry, but I have no idea. That's the goal of my mission, to find Hans Varlberg. That's why I have to get back to my train as quickly as possible and to get out of Komkalsgrad. And you cannot find him without the train? The train is one of his last inventions. So is Oscar, the automaton engineer. I get the feeling that the two of them are going to lead me to him. Did you hear that, James? I might see Hans again. I have dreamed so long of meeting my dearest sweetheart again. Oh, if only I could sing. If only I were in Paris, I would ask George for that miracle cocktail. The one that only he knew how to make. Wouldn't I, James? Yes, madam. As you have frequently said, without that famous cocktail, your French tour would have probably been cancelled. I don't understand. An extraordinary tale, my dear. It was December, and it was terribly cold and damp. I had to play the role of Tatiana that evening at the opera. But since the morning, I had lost my voice. It drove me completely mad with worry. I don't know how George, the barman at the Moritz Hotel, heard about my affliction, but he brought me up a cocktail that he had invented. A strange concoction. But it turned out to be a miracle cure. My voice returned to me in an instant. That's amazing. That's just what we need. We're going to mix you up a cocktail. Ah, oh, my dear child. It is impossible. George never told me the recipe of the drink. He loved to keep his trade secrets. He said it made him absolutely irreplaceable. <laughs> Well, I'm going to get George to tell me. He hasn't yet met with my powers of persuasion. I'm wrapped up in a case at the moment, and because of it I met a certain Mr. Sergei Borodin, director of the Komkalsgrad Industrial Complex, situated to the northeast of here. Ah, oh, I remember that factory. <gasps> oh, a sad city indeed. <laughs> what am I saying? They all were. Madame Romansky... This Borodin is one of your biggest fans. If you could come and sing for him there, it would make one of his biggest dreams come true. Sing? Oh, my poor girl. I have not sung for years. Time has taken its toll. My voice is like the rest of me. Faded and wan, like my heart. Oh, aren't you going a bit far there? I bet you've still got a great voice. Oh, you are the sweetest cherry, my dear. I am not senile yet, but I look reality in the face every time I look in the mirror. And I can tell you, singing is something I did in the past. Madame Romansky, please understand I would never have come so far to disturb you if I didn't really need your help. I understand, my dear. But my health is failing me, as does my voice. Believe me, no one is sadder than I. I'll let you get a bit of rest. Thank you for listening to me. It was a real pleasure, my child. You are a charming young lady, and simply talking to you has warmed my soul. <laughs>